prophecy is given when there is no circumstances or situation at hand, like the prophet Jeremiah. In 70 years, Babylon will be no more. And before Jerusalem was even laid in siege, Jeremiah said that the king of Babylon will come and take all of you to captive. This is world prophecy. Prophecy is given where there is no context at hand. Not after when Russia mobilized their troops to surround Ukraine, then you now start to say that uh, we have to pray for Russia and Ukraine. And when it invades, you now start to change your video title and say that this is prophecy fulfilled. God is not mocked. World prophecies must be accurate, direct, and specific. Uh, I see the cloud is dark and there's no context to give. Fine, if the cloud is dark, you should be able to say a second word. God is not mocked. God knows everything. When he speaks, he will give undeniable evidence that he is the one speaking. In the time of Moses, he can cast some plagues and make the water to turn to blood and all that. And the witch doctors were able to do the same things. But there is a limit where they can go to. But Moses can do many of them and can even reverse the plagues. But the witch doctors cannot reverse the plagues, as you and I have read in the book of Exodus. So when God does his things, he will do it to the extent that he, he, he will let everyone know that he is the one speaking. Okay? The forces of darkness cannot, cannot imitate it to that level. World prophecies cannot be general. It must be accurate, direct, and specific. Back in 4th of July, 2021, I said that in the nation of Paris, out of all the nations of the earth, I said in the nation of Paris, in three days' time, there will be building and fire in one of the, in one of the government authority buildings. Three days later, 7th of July, it happened at the great Notre Dame Cathedral in the nation of Paris. 7th July, three days later, and it happened. This is prophecies. Now let us come to signs and wonders, to the issue of healing and deliverance. It boils down to the news, the good news that he is preaching. So let us turn to Deuteronomy. Chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. Here comes the key context in these three verses. A prophet declares a sign and it takes place. Can you imagine that? And then the good news that he preaches is that, oh, let us not uh, worship Jesus Christ. Let us go and follow other gods. Huh? And verse 3 says that the Lord enabled that prophet to do signs and wonders, to test us whether we follow God with all his heart and with all his soul. So it boils down to the good news that he is preaching. Is it truly scriptural, full gospel? Or do signs and wonders, but the good news is not based on the word of God. The spirit of God is rooted on the word of God to flow. One is not complete without the other. If you have the word of God, but you do not have the spirit of God, it is not complete. And if you can do signs and wonders, but you do not have the word of God, it is it's not complete either. The spirit of God is not complete if there is no word of God. So this issue of healing and deliverance and all that, the good news that is preached, Jesus Christ said that, go to the ends of the earth and preach the good news and signs and wonders will follow them. Now, let us come to the issue of deliverance. You see people shake, but that does not mean that deliverance is indeed taking place. It may be the culture of the church or what the person think it should be done. I must shake, then I must be delivered. Let us turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 32. It says that the spirits of prophets are subject to the control of the prophets. If the spirit of the prophets is subject to the control of the prophets, the spirit of man is subject to the control of man. If you think that you must shake, uh, and a man of God touch you, you shake. <laughs> so deliverance is not falling down. Deliverance is not shaking. 
deliverance, the definition of deliverance is your heart changed to become more like Christ Jesus. Yes, you may shake. Yes, you may not shake. You may not shake and still you can be delivered. You can shake and still not be delivered. Now let us come to the issue of hierarchy of anointing. Healing, deliverance, and individual prophecies. Uh, you remember you went into a room and you quarreled with a little boy yesterday. Healing, deliverance, and individual prophecies can be staged, meaning can be staged beforehand. Later you do this, later you do that. But world prophecies cannot be staged. The war between Israel and Gaza last year, I said that the war will end in five directions. Five days later, the war ended. The world prophecies cannot be staged. Okay? It is a hierarchy. Okay? But if you can prophesy world prophecies and you cannot deliver, heal, and do individual prophecies, it means that your world prophecy gift is questionable. Okay? You cannot fly without learning to walk first. Hmm? And if you have the gift of healing, deliverance, and individual prophecies, yearn for a world prophecy gift. Okay? Because a world prophecy can bring about individual prophecy. But individual prophecy cannot bring about world prophecy. So now the good news that we are preaching. Jesus, our Lord, says that we recognize one another by their fruits. You will recognize them. So likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. What fruit is this? This is the fruit in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. These are the fruits of the Holy Spirit that we can recognize one another. A person is not a man of God if he can only do signs and wonders. It is also the news that he is preaching. The witch doctors in the time of Moses can turn water to blood as well. They can do signs and wonders, but they were not of God. So lastly, concerning the fruits of the Holy Spirit, Songs of Songs, chapter 1, verse 6. Do not stare at me because I am dark, because I am darkened by the sun. My mother's sons were angry with me and made me take care of the vineyards. My own vineyard I had to neglect. How do we know a true man of God? How do we know a fake man of God? Is, is in this sentence. They made me to take care of their vineyards, but my own vineyard I had to neglect. If any pastor is only concerned of asking his members, his followers to take care of his own vineyard, but their own vineyard, meaning their own spiritual growth, he neglect them. That one is a fake man of God. Because a true shepherd, a true man of God, a true pastor, a true prophet, a true evangelist will, will build up his flock's spirituality. Build them up. What is your calling? Your calling is to prophesy. I will, give, I will, I will create that environment to let you grow. I will teach you what I have to fulfill your destiny and calling. And not just every month collect the 10% of the members' tithe and offerings and just feed his own vineyard. Your own vineyard, I cannot neglect. But to also let you take care of your own vineyard. To know Jesus is to know the Holy Spirit. Believe that God is the same yesterday, today and forever. If God is the same yesterday, today and forever, what you read in the Bible, it can still happen today because he is the same. Jesus Christ said that I will not leave you and lo and behold to the ends of the age. He still works today. The signs and wonders that you read in the Bible, it still happens today. Do not be a sense knowledge believer. Meaning you only understood Jesus Christ based on the word of God that you read. 
You have to go deeper than this. Christ Jesus said in the Gospel of John, the words that I have spoken to you are full of spirit and life. This means that every word of God that you read in the Bible, there is a Holy Spirit behind that. And you must attain that. The words that I have spoken to you are full of spirit and life. You must attain the Holy Spirit that you read in these words. If not, it is all for nothing. If not, you will just be a sense knowledge believer. When the wind came, your house will crumble. You build your house on the sand. Okay. How do you know that you are indeed a born again Christian? Matthew chapter 13, verse 44 tells you how do you know if you are a born again Christian? The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then, in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. You know that you are a born-again Christian when you found that treasure and you sold all you had in order to get that treasure. If you, have still, if you still have your, one of your foot inside the world and one of your feet inside the kingdom of God, you are not born again based on this verse that Jesus Christ has spoken. It's a parable. Selling your field to buy that treasure, meaning all that you have, your senses, your thoughts, your words, your deeds, and your behavior, is influenced by the Holy Spirit. This is a true born-again Christian. Meaning all you had in the past, you sell it away. Your behavior, your thoughts, your deeds, your words, Everything that you had, you let it be influenced by the Holy Ghost. This is a born-again Christian. A Christian is not someone who read the Holy Bible from Genesis to Revelation. A Christian is not someone who has been baptized in the water for 100 times. A Christian is someone whose words, thoughts, and deeds is influenced by the Holy Ghost. This is a Christian. 